Welcome, welcome. My name is Dennis Deloach, and I'm the host of the Uncle Jim Effect podcast. And welcome to episode number 56. Uh, and this one is entitled Endure to the End. And appropriately, uh, this is a great topic that uh, I am dealing with right now at this moment. Uh, it's been a little bit since I did a podcast, so I want to, uh, I figured, what is it that I need to hear? And this is the, the message I need to hear is how do we get on track and endure to the end or stick to it or just keep getting after it when uh, things get tough? So, uh, again, we're still growing. It's amazing to me. We've got a lot of followers. Uh, you can follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, please share with your fa family and friends. And uh, I'm excited to get going. So let's jump in again. We're going to talk about enduring to the end. And I want to start like I usually do with a quote. This quote is by Calvin Coolidge. It's a little long, but it starts us off the way I think we need to start. Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Rewarded genius, I'm sorry, unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. So press on, according to uh, former President Calvin Coolidge, is a slogan that has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. So press on means to continue or endure to the end. So what I want to talk about today is some steps that, uh, and these are in no particular order, but some steps that I've uh, thought about and uh, put together basically 10 steps on how we can improve our chances to endure to the end and what that looks like and just common sense things. But sometimes it's easier to put these in a list form and it makes it a little easier for us to follow. So I've got some uh, quotes that I'll do. I'd like to share one uh, before each one of these 10. And I, I don't know about you, I really like quotes. They get me thinking almost like a parable or a story. It seems to allow me to really kind of ingrain the, the concept into my thought process when I hear a quote, because it makes me think what the person who said the quote, what they're thinking, and it kind of broadens my understanding of the topic. So again, these are top 10 ways that I've come up with or reviewed, again, in no particular order on uh, ways to help yourself endure to the end. So we're going to start first with number one is to cultivate a growth mindset. And basically what that means is if we're always in the mode of growing uh, or embracing challenges, learning from failure, then we're always going to be focused on moving forward and what those uh, challenges are. So as long as we're focused on what our challenges are, and learning from our failure in the past. And it's never an issue to where we want to stop doing what we're doing. And so that's always been a big part for me is to have a growth mindset. What does that mean to have a growth mindset? It means to always be looking to improve yourself, whether it's through uh, reading, through seminars, meetings, books, uh, masterminds, uh, podcasts, all of those things. We should always be looking to improve ourselves, And as long as we're doing that, then we have a reason to continue to grow and to endure to the end. Uh, so before we do the second one, I want to share a little quote with you. And this is by Shane Parrish. It says, failure hurts, but passes quickly. Regret hurts forever. So don't we all have things that we look back on and regret? <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, <clears throat> we want to minimize those things in our life that we regret. So we want to try everything we can. Uh, and that kind of fits into this endure to the end mentality. So the second one we want to talk about today is uh, in our path to enduring to the end and not giving up is to set clear and meaningful goals. Uh, and as long as we have a long term vision, but break down our goals on a short term basis, that allows us to progress towards these goals that we have. And as long as we're progressing towards goals, we're literally enduring to the end. So it's so important to me to have a clear cut uh, 10X plan. We've talked about that a lot, but basically 
if you have it set in your mind what your goals are and they're clear and they're more importantly they're meaningful to you you always have something to strive for and that will replace the parts in your life that give you the self-doubt and to keep you from enduring to the end so again the second step in enduring to the end is to set clear and meaningful goals and to have a long-term vision uh next quote and this is by james a missioner character consists of what you do on the third and fourth tries so a lot of us say well i tried that it didn't work well how many times did you try that you know was it once twice even twice i mean some of the greatest accomplishments breakthroughs and inventions in this world were literally not accomplished after dozens hundreds and even thousands of times we all are familiar with uh, instances that show the persistence of people is just mind-boggling sometimes so enduring to the end is literally not what we do initially or even after the first multiple times it's what you do at the end that counts so the third step in uh enduring to the end is to develop a strong support system and what that looks like to me is to separate i mean to surround yourself with positive people to have mentors and coaches to not allow yourself to be um, controlled or surrounded by people that are full of negative energy. Because it seems like in life, if you're looking for negative outcomes or pessimism or uh, Debbie Downers, you are absolutely going to find them. So the key to me, or one of the keys to enduring to the end, is to absolutely surround yourself with ultra positive people uh, people that don't give up, people that are positive, people that lift you up, people that themselves are enduring to the end. That, that to me is the key because as humans and human nature, the natural man, we're always looking for opportunities to slow down and stop. And if we're around people that say, yeah, that's good, you should, we absolutely will. And so, okay, moving on. The next quote we have before we go to our fourth step is uh the last thing to grow on a fruit tree is the fruit and that quote is by tom bilyeu isn't that ironic uh the thing that we look for on a fruit tree is the fruit but it takes years and years to get to that point where they then have an overnight success story that we see uh, as fruit on the tree we didn't see all of the work it took and in the enduring to the end so the fourth step in enduring to the end is uh practicing mindfulness or meditation or prayer some form of uh, mental relaxation and focus uh, and, and i like to meditate a little bit each day but more important to me is the act of prayer prayer is the communication you have with your god and i think it realigns us to what it is exactly in life uh, that we want to do and is it in, a, in accordance with god's will if it is we get back to that first step which talks about uh i'm sorry the second step which talks about having clear mindset and clear goals and so practicing mindfulness or meditation prayer whatever it is that you want to do there i, I try to do a little bit of both of those uh and basically you're trying to stay in the present mindset we're not looking so much for tomorrow but how do we maximize the most we can do today? Um, and then that helps to build inner strength, which is the key that we have when we're talking about uh, enduring to the end. Okay, on to the fifth step. So this is by David Goggins, uh, a famous Navy SEAL. When you think that you are done, you're only 40%. 40% into your body's capable what into what your body is capable of doing. That's just the limit that we put on ourselves. So even these uh, people like Navy SEALs who accomplish things that the rest of us think are phenomenal, figure they're using 40% of their capacity or potential. So that ought to let us know that enduring to the end, when we think we're at our wits end or the end of the rope, we, we have a lot more rope to go and i really like that that quote um and so the fifth step on this is uh you have to foster or use spiritual practices uh 
some type of scripture study, I think, something that keeps you looking at the long-term eternal perspective. That to me is a big, big deal when we're trying to endure to the end. If we have that long-term eternal perspective, then a lot of the times that's what we hold on to and not the short-term pain or the short-term disappointment or uh, the short-term failure. We're looking at that long-term uh, uh, spiritual growth that allows us then to continue. Okay, we're moving on. So to number six, uh, and this is by Newt Gingrich. Perseverance is the hard work you do after you get tired of doing the hard work you already did. And so it's important to remember that those people that are successful do a lot of difficult things. And when the rest of us say, oh, we're tired, I'm going to quit, that's just when their work begins. And so it's really important to remember that, that the hard work begins when you think you're done. And that kind of fits in line with our sixth sixth uh, step on enduring to the end, and that's to maintain physical health. Uh, obviously, we know the benefits of maintaining physical health. But if you're having regular exercise, eating right, and keeping your body healthy, remember, enduring to the end is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And what better way to uh, finish a marathon than to be in physical health? So if we do not have the physical health to endure for a minute, how are we going to endure to the end? So I think that might be one that's overlooked. And probably if we had to pick one that was what we should start with, it would be maintaining physical health because that does so much for us. When we get in shape physically, it absolutely affects our mental outlook, self-esteem. It allows our body the ability or capacity to produce at a high level. And uh, all of those things then allow us to do all of these other things. Okay, number seven. And so this is a little longer quote. It's by uh, uh, Neil A. Maxwell. To think of enduring to the end as hanging in there or doing one's duty relentlessly is not inaccurate. Yet enduring to the end is more than outlasting and surviving, though it includes those qualities. We're called upon to endure it well, gracefully, not grudgingly. We are also told that we must endure in faith. These dimensions of enduring are important to note. Likewise, we are asked to endure valiantly. So we're not asked to endure to the end and to just barely finish. We're asked to do it with a smile on our face, to not be uh, begrudgingly, to uh, endure it well and gracefully. So we're not expected to come through and barely make it. We're supposed to be doing it with a smile on our face. And that leads us into step number seven on uh, improving our abilities to endure to the end, and that's to develop emotional intelligence. And basically by that, what we mean is to manage our emotions, to have empathy for our fellow man, to try to be a little more understanding. So as we go through our life and realize how absolutely difficult it is to endure to the end, and we in our own life, we can realize, wow, that's that is tough. Sometimes we don't extend that grace or that empathy or that understanding to those around us as they might be going through something actually much more difficult than what we are. And so it's very, very important to do that. <clears throat> uh, number eight, this is by Dieter F. Uchtdorf. It's your reaction to adversity, not adversity itself, that determine how your life's story will develop. And isn't that true? Every one of us, the one thing we have in common is that we're all going to face adversity. Uh, our uniqueness or individual stamp on life is how do we react to that adversity? That is important. Um, and this next one is also probably one of the most important, and it's the concept of practicing gratitude. So step number eight on how we can become better and enduring to the end is to, to practice gratitude and to do it at all times and daily. And this might be the most important one uh, outside of the physical health, which if we don't have physical health, we die. And that eliminates what we're doing. So practice gratitude, you know, whether that's through a daily gratitude journal, whether that's through uh, spending more time appreciating the small wins, whether it's looking at every aspect of your life and realizing 
uh, the simple little blessings, a little story here. I've got a, one of my good, good friends that I used to coach uh, high school football with for many years, had a double lung transplant at an early age and talked about how he couldn't breathe. And that went on for m many years before the surgery. Um, and he talked about, I, I fought for every breath. I felt like I was breathing through a small straw. And when I heard that, I thought, wow, I've never sat down and been grateful that I could, you know, breathe in a deep breath. And that I just took that for granted or that my arms work or that my heart beats and my eyes work. And so I, I think sometimes if we don't take the opportunity to be grateful for every, every minor thing that, uh, we're given that someone else has had it taken away from them. We're really not uh, able to see how blessed our lives really are. And once we see that, then enduring to the end is a little easier. So we're going to move on to step number nine. This uh, quote is by Nelson Mandela, and I really, really like this. He says, do not judge me by my success. Judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up again. I like that, and I've thought about this quote a lot in my life. <clears throat> uh, as we do tough things or as we go through tough things uh, and fail, sometimes we get this idea that successful people are lucky and just get one break after another and one success after another, and it just goes on and on, and that's absolutely not true. Again, we don't see the struggles and the fall. We just see them getting up. We come along the fruit tree after years of struggling and just see the fruit and think that, you know, it was born that way. So staying grateful, uh, especially on those things that we take for granted, always starting your day with a gratitude evaluation on how nice you have it is a good way to start. And that's what works best for me. We're getting closer, but uh, step number nine on the ability to endure to the end is to stay flexible and adaptable. Uh, one of these core values we used to have in our business was to embrace change, not to accept it, but to embrace it. Change is absolutely coming in life. It comes every hour and every day. And if we fight change, life is going to be a struggle and enduring to the end is going to be minimized. As long as we embrace change, try to understand why the change is coming, what do we need to learn from it? Uh, how do we adapt to it? How do we... Uh, alter our plans, not alter our vision, but how do we keep our eye on the same vision and goals, but change the steps maybe on how we get there. We're going to be a lot more happy and a lot more successful and a lot more uh, able to endure to the end. Okay. And finally, step number 10 on how do we become uh, better at enduring to the end. This quote is by Thomas A. Edison. And uh, this kind of sums everything up. When you have exhaust, when you have exhausted all possibilities, remember this: you haven't, and it's that simple. I think Thomas Edison said uh, it took him ten thousand plus tries to invent the light bulb, and uh, and they said, "How come you kept going after failure after failure?" He said, "I I didn't fail. I just found ten thousand ways not to do it." And I think in life, if we can do that, we'll endure the end in everything that we do. And so this 10th step is a very important one. And it's the one we'll close on. And it's to visualize success. Very important for us to continue to visualize everything we do. If we have that vision in our mind of what a growth mindset looks like, what our vision is, what our goal is, we have a visualize success as we pray, as we meditate, as we work out, we have to visualize us doing those things and having a healthy body. We have to visualize gratitude. Another good friend of mine had a quote that I absolutely love. And he said, uh, gratitude attracts miracles. And it's so true that the more gratitude we have in our life and the more we express it and to think about it, ironically, the more miracles start to show up in our life. And so gratitude attracts miracles. I love that. And so as we visualize success in every one of these steps, we're going to be well on our path to enduring to the end. And that's the goal with all of this. Uh, I hope this has been of some benefit to you. This enduring to the end 
is a minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day process. It's not something that we look at from the back and say, well, I've got to run a 26 mile marathon. This is more like, hey, today I've got to take 25 steps. And how do I start with step number one? And then how do I do step number two? That's what enduring to the end is. Enduring to the end, we can mean endure to the end of this minute, endure to the end of this hour, endure to the end of this day, and then start over. So uh, I'm excited and want to thank you so much for the support that I've received for this podcast. Uh, this is a great topic. I hope it has benefit for you. We've got some uh, exciting news to announce coming up in the next few podcasts on some of the um, people that we're working to get on the podcast. We've had some really, in my mind, life-changing people, some of the top people in the world and what they do on our podcast in the past, but I'm excited to look at uh, possibly getting some other people on that are names that you're familiar with and hopefully will lend their support and example and story to our uh, uh, mission with this, which is to bring hope to people to help millions of people realize their God-given potential and to help their family and friends do the same. So until the next podcast, thank you so much. and. Uh, Keep getting after it. Bye-bye.